What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have a fun video today showing you how to set up a single value slider within Power BI. As an example, here's a Power BI report that just has some text saying, how would you rate this Power BI report today? And the user has the option of selecting uh, which kind of emotion or opinion they have about this Power BI report. So we're showcasing the single value slider that I'm interacting with, and I'll also show you how to kind of throw in this emoji here to kind of give that representation of how the user's feeling about the report. The way in which you set up a single value slider is actually kind of hidden. That's why I wanted to shed some light on this technique. So let's go ahead and dive into our demo within Power BI Desktop. I'm gonna come over to the completed demo. I'm just gonna grab this text box here so we don't have to duplicate it in our file that doesn't have any info in it yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in. And there we go, there's our text box. The key to getting a single value slider is that you actually have to use a what if parameter. Before we get into that, I just kinda of wanna show you how you can't get a single value slider just from a column of data. So if I just create some fake data here, one, two, three, and load this in. So with our new column one, if we drag that onto the report canvas and turn that into a slicer, we can see the options that we have available to us, list, drop down between, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So none of these are a single value slider. You see that there are two values for each of these options. I mean, if we go to less than or equal to, we have one that we choose from, but you see that we still have uh, this kind of less than or equal to functionality where one is grayed out. So it's not what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that uh, dummy table of data. We don't need that anymore. And in order to get that single value slider, we actually have to go to the modeling tab and add a what if parameter. So if we click on this new parameter button, we can name this parameter. I'm gonna call this feedback and we can leave it as a whole number data type. And I wanna give the user options from one to five just to kind of give them five feedback options, increment by one, so one, two, three, four, five. And I want to ensure that this add slicer to this page is checked. That's going to add our single value slider. So if we click okay, it's going to pop open with this new slider that's just a single value. So that's exactly as we want it. So I'm gonna position this right below here, something like that. So now if we go to our data view, we can see what that what if parameter is actually created. It's created a series of values from one to five. It's even created a measure associated with that what if parameter. We're not actually gonna use that for the purpose of this video. So we already have the single value slider already on the page. I'm gonna continue on and just show you how to add those emojis to give that nice feedback loop. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new column on this table and I'm just going to call this emoji just for the sake of a title. And I'm gonna use a nice switch statement. I'm gonna use switch set equal to true. So that's just going to allow us to evaluate for a certain condition. So we're gonna say for the first option, if feedback equals one, we want to return something. So I actually want to return uh, open and close quotation marks. And in the middle of it, I'm gonna click windows dot or windows period. And that's gonna open up the emojis on windows. So I can find uh, an emoji representation of someone who has very bad feedback for this report. Uh, for example, this really mad face. And I click that twice, I actually only need one of those. And I'm gonna put a comma after it. I'm just gonna copy this four more times to give us our other four feedback options. So let's just paste that in, paste that in. I'll get rid of that last comma and close it off. So now when our feedback is two and then three and then four and then finally five, now let's just change the emoji that we're showing here. So windows period. Uh, so right now this would be kind of a dissatisfied look. Uh, that one weary face, that one might actually work. So let's just go ahead and do that one. For three, that's kind of right in the middle. So we'll do someone who's just not that happy about it. So maybe that guy, neutral face. And then just a couple more here. So someone who's pretty happy. I mean, that guy's pretty happy, slightly smiling. And then the fifth one, they're extremely happy about the Power BI report. We can use pretty much any of these across the top. I'll use this first one. And let's go ahead and click enter now that we have that column and we see those emojis saved into this new column that we have. So now when we come back to our report page, we can go ahead and throw in our emoji in the form of a card and we have our one emoji here. So firstly, I'm just going to make this as big as possible. 
So the largest text size for a card is 60, and I can get rid of my category label. I'm also going to get rid of the title, or the slicer header, on my slider. So that leaves us with something that looks like this. So I think that's perfect right there. So I'm gonna take my uh, emoji here and put it right here, right under, and move my slider a little bit. The thing that I wanna do here is I wanna cover up that, uh, that numeric input, that three right there. I wanna cover that up with the picture that's on top of it. So that looks pretty good. And the last kind of piece of advice here is when a user is clicking on this, because they'll be interacting with the slider, I wanna keep that in the background. So I don't want that to show up when they click. Uh, so I want that to always be behind the emoji. We can do that in a couple different ways. Firstly, we can group these two visuals in the selection pane. So let's go to the selection pane. We can group these two by control clicking and right clicking and grouping. I will actually go ahead and do that. Or there's also the new option to click on each individual one and in the formatting, you can go to uh, search for layer and there's this option for maintain layer order. I'll turn that on and for my slicer, I'll turn that on as well. We're kind of doing two different methods in order to keep that layer order, but that's okay for us right now. So now we've given the user the option to say, hey, I really don't like this report. This report is pretty bad. Uh, I don't really have an opinion about this report or you know, I like this report or I really, really like this report. So uh, this was just kind of a fun use case for why you might wanna use a single value slider. It is a little bit difficult to find that single value slider unless you know exactly how to set it up. So I hope you got something out of today's video. If you like the video, make sure you check out my training over at training.biaelite.com. We have some awesome videos on Power BI DAX and Alteryx at the moment. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.